It's me again, with my brother. Ordinary guys drinking big wine. In case you missed it, last time we opened the biggest wine of this world, which is the Domaine de la Romani Conti Conti. If you missed it, you can always search YouTube under Romani Conti and look at it. But today, we're going to open another big wine. This is the biggest wine of Bordeaux, Chateau Petrus, 1997. The biggest wine of the Bordeaux. Uh, 1997 is not an exceptional year, but it's still a good year and from a good producer. So we have the wine today and of course we need our equipment, which is, I'm going to cheat today a little bit because my hands are not very steady. So we will use a funnel and this will take care of the sediment and we have to decant it and of course we have to drink with good glasses. Yes. Uh, these are, oh I forgot the name. Rydell? Riedel, yes. yes. And then of course we're going to open it with the corkscrew from Chateau Leglioli. Okay. The one with the famous fly. Yes, the one with the famous fly. Okay. Now, um, the wine today, uh, it's, I think, ready to drink by now. 13.5% alcohol, 1997, so 13 years. So all set to go, and without further ado, I will open it. Yes, that's... We're all waiting for this while he is preparing for, the, with the tool, and uh, with, that's the right tool, of course. And uh, also being very careful not to destroy uh, the sediments on the wine, which he had uh, already spent the wine for a couple of days. And uh, he's trying to be careful. And uh, once he has done that, we'll be able to tell you what it tastes like. It's a first for me. I am a new learner to this uh, very interesting. I don't know about you, but I'm going to drink this now. So first we have to decant it. And I'm going to cheat a little bit with a German funnel. This is going to take care of any sediment that I may pour into the wine. And this will also help aerate it. Yep. Now, we're okay. going to try this now. And of course, together we go with this. Not just we have uh, excellent food to go with this prime rib, uh, crunchy, specially made uh, uh, mozzarella cheese. Actually, it's made like a thin uh, cheese cracker, supposedly. But uh, it's a uh, taste to taste just like the real cheese itself. I'm going to taste that as well. So it was the final bit of it. And uh, okay, now. We will let you taste it, and then we'll see if it's, uh, we will be expecting a very fruity and uh, very well balanced wine. It's a 1997 Patrus. Now, of course, we have to wait until it opens, but first, we swirl. let's see what happens. You need a big glass top, so excellent glass to, for, for this kind of wine. Lots of room to stop the flavor, now, the aroma going. Now it doesn't open up, the aroma doesn't open up as quick as the Conti, of course. It's reserved. It's mushroom. Like, yes, I can smell the mushroom as well. And Which is typical for a pomerol. Okay, mushroom, pomerol. Pomerol is also great for the good or the very good... Uh, pomerol is famous for the Merlot. This is pure Merlot, 100% Merlot. Not for the champagne? No. Mm. <laughs> I thought Pomerol was a good grip for the champagne. No, no, no. More education for me. Yes, more education for me. So what's a good grip for the champagne? Maybe we look at that next time. Champagne? Yeah. Champagne is a mixture of Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, and Pinot Menuo. What will we be looking at or thinking about if we were going to do an excellent champagne next time? Excellent champagne? Of course, the uh, famous Cristal, but we need to go move a little bit higher. So, we talk about Salon, and we talk about Kruk, Close de Mesnel. Now, those are 100% pure Chardonnay. Oh, I see. Hmm. 
Is it opened up? No. Far yeah. from it. Still smell the mushroom and the muddy, muddy, very muddy smell. Compared comparing that to Roma Conti is hundred percent difference. Where very quickly I smell very good smelling, flowery, very with a very flowery smell. Very good smell. But you know, the whole purpose of this, I'm, we're just checking whether the wine has gone bad. Whether it's corked or whether it's cooked. So, but with the tasting notes, it doesn't come right away. We need to let it open up for at least half an hour to an hour, which will come back. But right now, let me just check to see from the smell. I know that the wine is not corked. So let me check if it's cooked. What would it smell like if it's uh, cooked? Yes. It's not cooked, but it is very reserved. So absolutely closed at this moment. So in, in, instead of wasting everybody's time, I think we need to uh, shut it down right now and come back with the, the tasting notes later. Because, okay. because right now it's all closed. I, I cannot taste anything. Ah, oh, that's why. I think we should do this. We should give it a good weight. And, and definitely, please stay with us and uh, we'll come back to this. Because as I tasted, even for my uh, so elementary palate, I uh, obviously I couldn't taste it because it's too elementary for me. So I have to wait. So really don't go away, we'll be right back very muddy. after this message. Mm, yes, <laughs> later on we'll see. What's good? Goes great with our side dishes. Home-baked potato bread and the best parmesan cheese that we find. Parmigiano, parmigiano, reggiano. What we did is we grated it. And then we baked it and made a very crisp, thin parmesan. It's excellent for going with the wine. Very light, light tasty snack. There's more to come. Please stay with us. By the way, I just rechecked it and it's opening up. So the best is yet to come. So see you later and cheers. And about you. No, I didn't. It has been two hours later. And as you can see, much of the wine has gone. Unfortunately, this has turned into nothing but just a very smooth table wine. I don't know what to say. Is it balanced? Yes. Is it full of fruit? No. Is it worth the money what it's asking for? That's the most important. Is it worth the money? Well, for me, no. And I don't care what Robert Parker says. And I don't care what the rest of the world says. Chateau Petrus has been a disappointment. In terms of value for the money. And I will have to, unfortunately, go back to my burgundy. And what about you? Well, other than the beginning, I taste the muddy flavor. And then comes the fairies about 15 minutes later. And then the fruit, which is not a very strong bouquet at the time, comes about 30 minutes later. Oh, it's been a long wait. At the end of the day, my comment is, the difference between a Petrus and a Romani Conti, the price difference is, one, pushes thing to you, like a push email, push the flavor of the bouquet, the finesse to you. The other, like the Petrus, is something you have to look for, you have to find it, you have to confirm it. Depends on the kind of person you are. Big difference in money. You want to be pushed and served, or you want to go search and find. It's all up to you, a matter of taste. For me, it's Romani content.